Hello and welcome to this rampant design tutorial looking at using rampant travel style mats inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now to start off with I've opened Resolve, I'm on the media page as you can see down here and all I've done is bring in my assets. Now it's important that you bring in your assets first unless of course you're working in 4K in which case it doesn't matter which way round you really bring them in because the rampant travel mats are actually 4K assets. And if I bring these in first, it can actually set your sequence sizing up to be 4K, whereas my assets are actually HD. So by bringing these in first, I'm setting everything up for HD. And then you might think, well, have I got to scale these? No, you don't, because scaling inside of Resolve is automatic. So if it knows it's an HD timeline, it's going to bring in these 4K assets and scale them to fit the HD timeline. Now. I've brought in the assets and at the moment I have none of them selected. Now this is the important point. You select the style mats that you want to bring in as mats. And as you can see I've got three here selected which is left, middle and right. Okay, So I've selected these three just to give you an example of how you can use three different clips inside of three different parts of these style mats. Now to add them to your project you right click on them and you choose add to media pool as a mat. Now just be a little bit careful because if you have a clip selected by accident and you do that and I go right click add to media pool as a mat I get this little button on the clip and it's actually added those mats to that clip okay which is one way of working but I'm not going to do that I'm going to control Z a few times to get rid of that. Instead I'm going to make sure nothing is selected and then when I right click and I add to media pool as a mat, you can see they are available as standalone mats that I can use on any of these clips at any time. They're not actually linked to these clips. Okay, so now I'm ready to move from the media page to the edit page to actually set up my timeline. When I go to the edit page, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm not going to use the two screens. I'm not going to use the, the one that looks at the original source and one that looks at the timeline. I'm going to click this button here which just gives me one monitor. And then I'm going to create my timeline. So I'm going to start with the water at the bottom. I'm just going to click and drag and put it down here in track one. And I'm going to put the cityscape in track two and the man in track three. And I'm just going to pull them to the appropriate length. There you go. So that will do for those three people. Now those are all set up, I'm ready to start modifying the clips because if you look at these travel mats, you'll see that one's left, one's right, and one's in the middle. Okay. Now if we want to see the actual names of these so that we can reference them later, remember you can go from an icon view to a list view, and you see it's one, three, two. So two is middle, one is left, and three is right. Okay, you can't see the whole of the item here. There is a zoom bar at the top, which kind of doesn't even show you the full amount, but you can actually see that it's showing me enough to say that this one is one, three, two. So really it goes from left to right. One, two, three is how it actually goes. So now we know how they're organized when we arrange them later. Okay, so now that I've done that, let's start thinking about where we want the items on screen. So I'm going to want this guy actually to go into the left section and he's clearly much more over the right. So I'm going to select him and then I'm going to go over to the inspector and then I've got my transforms and I need to do the position and I'm just going to pull him across to where I want him to be, say about there. And now there's an important step. I need to turn this into an independent clip that sort of ignores the transforms for future reference because if we don't do this next clip then it's going to muck up the mats later. So what you do is simply right click on this adjusted clip and you go up to new compound clip. And when you create a new compound clip it says what's it called and I'm just going to call this one left and I'm going to click create. Then I'm going to actually turn off the visibility of that item and I'm going to look at the middle one. Now this is the middle one. I probably want this bit in the middle. So click on the clip Again, go back up to the transform properties under the inspector and I'm just going to, oh, don't want to zoom, I want to move the position so it's about in the middle, about there. Same process, right click on the clip, turn it into a new compound clip. Call this one middle, 
create. Turn off the eyeball, and then I can look at the water. Now I probably want to move just a little bit over this side, because this one's going to be the right. So again, with it selected, go to the position controls, X. X goes across, because X is a cross, ha ha. So that looks about right for where I want to go. Again, right click, new compound clip, and call this one, oops, R-I-G-H-T. Right, create. So they are created to turn the eyeballs back on. Now we're going to apply the mat, and you do that on the color page. So if I go to the color page, I've actually got the three items here. So I know this is top, middle, bottom. So I'm going to select the top one, and there's a few steps, but once you know the steps, it's actually relatively straightforward. The first step is to apply the mat itself, which is done by a right click on the node. So you right click on the node, and right at the bottom you've got add mat, timeline mat, and choose, we're gonna choose one. Okay, now you can't see anything because this has added an alpha channel. It's using the alpha channel from the mat itself to create it, but we haven't got an alpha channel output. So the next stage is simply to right click, add an alpha output, and then take the alpha output of the node and take it to the alpha output of the actual correction. And then when you pull the playhead through, you'll see the man comes in, okay? Now, we can do the middle one. So select the middle clip, right click, go down to add mat, timeline mat, and that's going to be two. Again, I need my alpha output. So right click, add alpha output, take the alpha output and move it across. And now when I pull across, you'll see that I've got two of them coming along. Now the third one, again, click on the third one, right click, add mat, Go down to the third mat. Again, right click in here and go to add alpha output and connect up the alpha channel out. And then when you pull through, you'll see that all three work as you would expect them to work. Now, there's nothing to stop you carrying on doing color grading on any of these clips. You can add, for example, you can add another node if you want to. So you can add another serial node. And you could play with, so we're looking at the water here, so let's just say I wanted to turn the water uh, blue a bit, so bluer, so you can see I'm pulling that across and making the water much bluer. So I'm making an adjustment, I'm still making an adjustment, but it's still respecting the alpha channel that's gone on. Now, if I need to make a change, so some of these aren't looking quite right, say, you can always go back to the edit page, and then you need to open these all up in sequence. So, for example, if I want to move him right over, so it's almost half on and I've got this eye showing, I can right click on this and you'll see it says open in timeline. Decompose, by the way, will get rid of all that you've done, so you don't want to choose that one. You just want to open it in timeline. You want to keep all the settings but be able to make an adjustment. So just open it in the timeline. There it is in the timeline. Select the clip and again you can go over and you can actually pull him across if you like. So we want him more like this, for example. Then notice at the bottom you've got this breadcrumb type menu, and if you click on timeline one and, and goes back, I double clicked it to pull it back, and you can see he's actually moved across. Now if you want to move the whole thing to say we want to zoom in and out of something, you can actually select all of the clips, right click on them and go to new compound clip. And I can call this one final three part mat and create. And again, I've got the item here. You click on it, and you've got the controls for the whole thing. So we can zoom in and out. Okay? We can we can rotate it. We can shift it left and right. Um, reset to get it back to any size that you want to. So you've got zoom, X, and Y. At the moment, they're locked. But if you wanted to unlock them, you could. So all of these controls are available here. And again, if you want to go backwards, you simply right-click, open in timeline. And then if you want to adjust any one of these, you probably want to pull across so you can see them, I can right click, say the middle one, open in timeline, and then I've got that one available, click on it, make any changes, and then get back, I'm just gonna double click where it says timeline, and that brings us back to the whole timeline exactly as we set it up. Okay, so that's how you can use rampant travel style mats inside of Resolve. Now please note one little thing, when it gets to the end of the mat, 
and it pulls off, it will cycle straight through the mat again. Okay, so you might want to trim at the end of the selection. And you can always do that with the extend edit. So click on the end so you can actually see this. Go to the playhead E to extend edit, and then your final thing is done. I hope you found this tutorial useful and that you're going to thoroughly enjoy using the rampant travel style mats. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you very much for watching.